Good evening. It's good to see everybody out tonight. I missed everybody this morning. Let's let's stand and open with our our uh, worship song, Welcome Home. <clears throat> That's for you and Ron and everybody else. <laughs> I am longing today for my home far away Where I'll lay down my sorrows and my care At the end of earth's night I will wake in God's light And together will welcome me home at the time God has planned I will go to home your struggles over welcome home you know just before we pray <clears throat> I was just thinking with that song welcome home today is well 10 days ago was the the ascension of our Lord. Forty days after he rose from the dead, well, fifty days after he rose from the dead is uh, the Pentecost. Well, today's the Pentecost. And one of them shows that Jesus is leaving, that there is life after death. And his last, one of the last things he said to his disciples, I'm going to go. The comforter's going to come. Here's the promise. I'm coming back. And I'm going to take you home. So in between those two is where we are right now. The one is going home with the promise, I'm coming back to take you home. The other one's here as a guarantee to make sure we get there. Isn't that awesome? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, Lord. It's good also to sing praises to you. But Lord, the promises of eternal life that we don't deserve the love of the Savior as you went to the cross and died in our place. We just can't imagine the why behind that. We can't imagine the depth of love. And yet, we thank you so much for all you do for us. We ask it now in Christ's precious name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> and let's sing again. I folded my Bible right into the hymnal and set it aside. Couldn't find it. Number 31 in your hymnal, please. Great is the Lord. <clears throat> Great is the Lord, He is holy and just, by His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves He is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great is the Lord and worthy By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Great Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice, 
Let's take up our offering at this time. <clears throat> Ron, would you lead us in prayer for that offering? sing again. Number 29, please. Glorify thy name. Number 29, your hymnal. <clears throat> and we'll sing all three stanzas, please. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. sing together 26 let's stand as we sing a mighty fortress is our god number 26 please <clears throat> singing all four stanzas please a mighty fortress is our god a bulwark never failing our Still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. Our God, God is equal. Did we in our own strength confide? Striving would be losing. We're not a right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is He. Lord Sabaoth is name from age to age the 
same, and he must win the battle, and throw this world of devils fill, should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him, his rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure, one little word shall fall here, that word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them His kingdom never ends, never ends. It's forever. You may be seated. By the way, I wanted to mention, we have on the back table uh, different cards with different things we can purchase for craft times uh, for Vacation Bible School. One card is one purchase. So if you want to go back there and find different things that you want to purchase this week or whatever, bring them. We'll stick them in the kitchen and save them back for that time. Pastor. All right, this evening we want to continue in focusing our eyes, all eyes on Israel, looking at this world today, see what's happening in this world. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are the guardian of our souls. You're the guardian of nations. Our future is secure. We thank you, Lord, for your care for the nation of Israel and that we can intercede. We do pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, Lord, you will bless Israel. And we thank you, Lord, for your providential plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you're surely aware, there's been a lot of rockets been fired towards Israel now. Uh, we had a president who watched over Israel, and now there is war in the streets. Hamas has started the war. They might be sorry by this point that they tried to do that. Uh, one of the random rockets uh, did hit a pipeline in, in Israel. That took some time to put that out. And at one point, they shot 135 rockets in five minutes. Uh, perhaps, you know, Iran is behind these things. Perhaps it's a test by Iran to see how strong is the Iron Dome, what could it handle. But... Um, Maybe 10% of those rockets landed in the Gaza, killing 80 of their own people. Well, the insanity of the Hamas is they uh, could have stopped sooner. They don't seem to want to stop. They don't seem to love their own people. It's more about their hatred of Israel and uh, the wicked leaders there. Well, Israel, you know, firing too. But here's what happens. When Israel is going to take out a building... They call that building, and then they give like 30 to 60 minutes. They say that building's coming down about 30 to 60 minutes, something like that. You need to clear the building. And so they don't kill the people. They, kill the, they ruin the building. And so that gives people time to go outside yeah, with their cameras and to film it going down. And there was a Jerusalem Day celebration, which is, you know, what the Jews do annually, and they really get excited during a Jerusalem Day celebration. Uh, Iranians had a celebration also, Ramadan. And um, what happened during the Jerusalem 
Day celebration is the Muslims set a tree on fire at the Temple Mount. And it was going up big time. It was a huge fire. So it looked like perhaps the Temple Mount or the, the mosque was burning up. And uh, by careful filming, watching the Jews jumping up and down, celebrating, which they do all the time, every year, uh, having even no idea what's going on over in the Temple Mount. They couldn't see it for a time, and then they saw it later. As they're filming this, it, the message to the world is, here's the Jews dancing up and down over our sacred site being burned up. They think the sacred site's being burned up. They weren't even aware of it, though, as if they're cheering for the burning of the mosque. And then uh, the Gaza Strip, Gaza, uh, Hamas, has these tunnels under the city, uh, $750 million worth of terror tunnels, 312 miles under houses. Well, now they're about half gone. Israel's taken them out. So where are we now today? Or a few days ago, at least. Ben Netanyahu was pressured by President Biden to sign a ceasefire. And... Uh, that of course, they wanted a ceasefire <laughs> before the Hamas started this, but the UN Security Council has the President of France, who many seem to think is going to be the future Antichrist, Emmanuel Macron, but we don't know that. Why would Israel sign a ceasefire? Why bother? Well, it's an if and when ceasefire. If the Hamas stops, then they'll stop. And so if Israel's not satisfied, the rock, rockets are still coming from the Hamas, uh, they can proceed if they want to. So it, it doesn't seem, makes Biden look good that we um, got a ceasefire signature here. But the, also the Hamas leaders, whether in the tunnel or outside the tunnel, have been falling like dominoes. Russia, I mean, um, Israel taking them out. So now the Hamas will certainly say that we won. You know, they signed this agreement. But it's pretty hard to impress their own people that they won. Look at how many died and look at the destruction in the streets. It's huge. But the Hamas continues to promise to exterminate the Jews. They want to divide the land, of course. Everyone wants Jerusalem. Is it? Why is that? Do they somehow sense God's power there? The devil wants Jerusalem. But um, Jerusalem has enjoyed the most peace since the 1967 Six-Day War ever, but that peace is gone now. The Hamas can launch in five minutes more missiles than they did in 2014. Five minutes. So they've upgraded their capabilities. The Hamas fired 3,000 rockets at Israel in four days. So you know they're really determined. But um, Hezbollah, by the way, can send 5,000 rockets in a single day. Hezbollah. Hezbollah to the north, Hamas on the south. Uh, Hamas fired at Israel, you know, over 1,000 missiles in 24 hours. But um, compared to the rockets of the past, those are like musket balls compared to what they're shooting now. Well, on the 14th, Putin from Russia, he said all this insecurity here is a threat to Russia. They feel insecure, poor, poor Russia. So that was a problem to him. And um, Iran flew a drone that they wanted to get into Israel like to get it under the under the Iron Dome. So you see the possibilities mounting here, but um, Israel shot that down. So they're testing Israel's defense for weaknesses. Now the world is crying at what Israel, of course they're always crying at Israel. They don't even like the underdog, but um, this is disproportionate, disproportionate. What you are doing to respond to the Hamas is so disproportionate, but um, how is that disproportionate when, you know, it's a war 
for survival against an aggressor. <laughs> That's not disproportionate. They're, they're doing this knocking on the roof, which is uh, they send a little missile in. It's noisy. It's got a lot of smoke. Lands near a building. Doesn't hurt anything. Boom. That is a warning. Israel sends warnings. You people need to get out of there. You know, if it's a Hamas headquarters or something, we're, we're going to take that out. And so that is not disproportionate. It's in fact, it's disproportionate on the side of mercy. So um, it's interesting, you know, debating atheists, how they run from any uh, evidences of uh, God's existence. There have been hundreds of them uh, that will not respond, will not read an article that proves God's existence. Yet they're whining all the time about God does not exist. But they're such cowards, I tell them so, you're such cowards just to read the article. Read the article and then talk to me. I've had one or two say they read the article, but they don't know how to refute it, so they go mum from there. S anyway, um, it's like here, you know, people miss the fact that we have a sovereign God. You don't mess with him. Hamas headquarters, by the way, is under a school. On May 13th, you know, Israel sent their air-to-ground troops towards the Gaza border. And uh, it even made the Washington Post. Israel's now prepared to take them out. And they took their troops there. They were ready. They're prepared to go in. But they did not go in. It was just a brilliant plan. It looked like they were going to go in to kill the militants of the Hamas. But the Hamas metro has an underground tunnel like the New York subway, the New York City subway, and that's where their arms are stored and they have concrete tunnels. Well, what Israel was doing was faking it. We're coming in. So the terrorists, like cockroaches when you turn a light on, are trying to get away, and they run into the tunnel. Here's what Israel did. They shot off 160 aircraft with bunker buster bombs, the kind that drill into the earth. They had the map of the tunnels. They knew exactly where to hit. And so um, even those that came out of the tunnels, somehow with their surveillance, they were able to shoot a lot of them down. So they killed a lot of the Hamas aggressors there. But the Hamas, you know, they've been shooting these rockets freely at Israel's cities over a long period of time. Once in a while, one gets through. But um, th they stepped over the line at one point, and Israel says, now, now we're going to return the favor. So just picture if there's some country out there firing rockets at Disneyland or, or the Super Bowl or the New York City comes near. Uh, hey, we have an obligation, don't we, to protect our land. And so <coughs> Israel was not quiet this time. <coughs> it's not what Hamas expected. Um, <coughs> Israel has had great ability uh, to be patient. This time they went after him. But on Israel's northern border, Iran now has stockpiled weapons, and in villages, of course, the cowards don't care if their citizens are killed, and um, very, very deadly. 2006, Hamas attacked Gaza, and then Hezbollah, two different groups, the Shiites attacked it from the north. Now, here in America, our university students, they get the whole story through the professors. And so Israel is the occupier. Israel is the aggressor. Israel's just the visitor in the land, surely the bad guy. And uh, the whole land is really Palestine. Israel should not be there. It is not Palestine. The word Palestine was never used until 135 A.D. Palestine is not in the Bible. So the Hamas and the PLO, they claim they own the land because of Ishmael. 
Ishmael had the land. Well, it's interesting. Abraham was a Chaldean. Hagar, who bore Ishmael, was an Egyptian. Well, they claim to be from Ishmael, then they're from Chaldeans and the Egyptians. And so, to come there, Canaan was already settled by the Canaanites. Who are the original Palestinians? It's not, it's not that group that's there now. So it's all a lie, but the world accepts the lie, and they want this lie as a basis for truth. They insist upon that, give it back to the Ishmaelites. Uh, let's turn to Leviticus chapter 20, and a very interesting here tells us how God has chosen his people, chose the Messiah, a separated people, and God says, these are mine, Leviticus 20, 24. You look and see if it's Ishmaelites, 24, 20, 24. But I have said unto you, you shall inherit the land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God which have separated you from other people. See verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, like separated unto God, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. Who's mine? It's not Ishmaelites. It's Israelites. Those from Isaac. And so, it's, a, it's so amazing that God to be willing to suffer for our sins, paying the infinite penalty for our sins, that God must be a man to represent mankind. And so in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, we see, you know, uh, that he is a man, but he's also the father of eternity here. It's God himself. He's the mighty God in that verse who gave himself for our sins. It's like Abraham and Isaac, and Abraham is ready to offer Isaac. Boy, the atheists mock that as if, you know, he killed his own son. He didn't. You know, there was a ram in the bushes, but, you know, Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. <laughs> he was glad when that ram was in the bushes. So he's God and man all in one person. That's a tough one for a lot of people to understand. But then he would pay the penalty for our sins. And so Jesus Christ has a genealogy. Uh, we, who do, how do you recognize who the God-man is? Well, he was born in Bethlehem. Uh, he came riding in on a donkey. He's despised by his own people, betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. He was to be crucified on a cross, raised again from the dead. Well, you know what? From Bible times in the Bible, 203 times, God says, He is the God of Israel, not Palestine. He is the God of Israel. This is all from God. Nine times, He's, he's called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's very clear. And so the university students are being fed a lie. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Jerusalem shall be trodden down by Gentiles until the times of Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Uh, you know, it's, you're familiar with movies with aliens and that kind of thing. They come from outer space, and then they come and live among the people, and they're strangers. It's a conflict between the worlds. Uh, many times I feel like, you know what, I feel like I'm the alien. Uh, there are so many forces. There are so many people deceived. There are so many voices. There are so many mixed up people. It's like we are the strange people. Like we arrived on this world, and we're not a part of it. 
Uh, we, we are the different ones. Well, common in the news now, guess what? It's UFOs. Did you know that? UFOs in the news. It's not just like Mark and Mindy stuff. It's uh, real things, like devils from Satan and amazing things. God says in the last days, I will send a strong delusion. And the Bible says the devil blinds the eyes. So you got the people from God and from the devil, the unsaved people that are already against God are so rebellious and mixed up. I was listening to Jack Hibbs and Emmer. They're talking about this. From the USS Omaha, the sailors were filming one of these UFOs, uh, filming the waves at sea. Boy, I've seen a lot of that. I've seen enough of that. But the UFOs then are, the UFO one is growing closer. And then amazingly, it just submerges itself and, and dives into the sea. Well, you know, verse 8 here in this chapter, Jesus says, don't be, de don't be deceived. A lot of people are deceived. They look at the power of this. There's also UOs, not flying objects, unidentified objects. And um, one was clocked at 250 knots underwater. That's 288 miles per hour. Uh, that's against physics. And then it, they will make a right-hand turn, just fly at an astronomical speeds, make a sharp right-hand turn. <coughs> Things that no man can possibly do. Nothing we have made can possibly, possibly do. So, in fact, you know all this UFO stuff, and this is occurring regularly in the news now from all over the world. This is what's going on. Last days, you're going to see these kind of miracles. You're going to see that kind of power from Satan. In fact, UFOs, all this breaking loose all over the world, it may be, you know, the rapture is all over the world, might be a way that Antichrist describes, you know, explains away the rapture. But um, Russia, interestingly, they have a Star Wars program with great abilities designed included in the design, take out our satellites. <coughs> China also <coughs> says they can do this. If they can't do it, they can do it soon. But the Biden a administration representative asked about, what about Space Force? Um, Space Force, I'll have to look into it. She had no idea what it was. That's how incompetent we are. We don't even know what it, we don't even know what it is. But um, USA, you understand, is missing from prophecy. USA, we should understand, is hated by two of the strongest nations in all the world. We are desperately hated by China and by Russia. There's no question about Iran. No question about North Korea. We are not a popular spot in the world today. We don't really have great abilities today. We're way behind. It looks like, you know, it could be a possible temporary confederacy between some of these to take out America. It's possible. China's intense on war, <coughs> and they're growing their naval power all over the world. They're all over the world and making bases out there. And so it's got the world worried. Now, I think it was this last week, they sent off a rocket into space that is 10 stories high. That's unbelievable. That's huge. And uh, in fact, the headline reads, large chunks of a Chinese rocket missed New York City by about 15 minutes. Why do you want a rocket that big? What you gonna do, go up there and blow up the moon or something? What are you thinking about doing? It's like, you know what, the devil hates your guts with no, uh, no excuses. China hates you, right? And uh, our politicians are not real trustworthy either since Bill Clinton signed in on the uh, population control, meaning diminish the planet to about 500 million people. I guess that means exterminate the rest, depopulate the earth. 
But uh, President Trump is very courageous talking about the coronavirus. You know, he called it the China virus. You think China's the nice guy? China actually is kind of a prototype to what's going to come in the Great Tribulation. That kind of terrorism and control. Of this could be a sign of the time. See verse 26. <coughs> Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after these things which are coming in the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. That's second coming. In contrast, today we're looking you know, for the rapture. Verse 28. And when they see these things come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spoke uh, to them a parable, behold, a fig tree and all the trees. So he speaks of the fig tree here. Also the fact that Jerusalem, you know, Zechariah is a burdensome stone. So as we study the Bible, as great as it was for all of that, World War I, World War II, there's nothing of that in the Bible. The Bible's not about us, except we need to be saved. We're the Gentiles out there who need to come to Christ. The Bible is about Israel. Let's look at Zechariah, and uh, <clears throat> that would be chapter 12. And notice what God says here, referring to this again. Uh, chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, that who the Lord... Here's what he does. Stretcheth forth the heavens, layeth the foundations of the earth, formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will, this is who's speaking, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about you when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And that day, I, I make Jerusalem, a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves, with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, as rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and will smite every horse with the people with blindness. And so, well, God says, you come against Israel, and that's going to happen then. In fact, we see it happening now. Uh, you're going to be cut in pieces. Um, so we're moving in that direction, definitely. And, you know, all nations coming against Israel. How are all nations going to come against Israel? And then God will fight for Israel. Because when Zechariah was speaking here as a prophet, uh, speaking about this, Jerusalem at the time was in ruins. Nebuchadnezzar had ransacked Jerusalem and to say, you know, this city is going to be a cup of trembling to all the world. Like, how so? It's, it would hardly be a threat to anyone. Israel? Jerusalem? What are you talking about? Well, it's future. And so in verse 3, we find it's a, God says, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. And so it's like in ruins at that time, it's going to be a cup of trembling. It's going to be a holocaust. So all nations come in siege against Jerusalem. It's an amazing prophecy. How could it be at a time like that for Zechariah to speak? And other nations have never been united against Israel like that. Egypt, the Babylonian Empire, the Syrians, uh, they didn't even get along. They're different religions. But what unites the world over there against Israel? Israel today, Islam, and they're going to unite against Israel. It's a cup of trembling coming from the ruins here. Look at this, verse 6. In that day that I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand, on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again, Here's God's promise in her own place, even in Jerusalem. And so, you know, as we see here in the book of Luke again, Jesus is saying, don't be distracted, you know, by the cares of this life, verse 34. Don't be distracted. Life has a lot of cares. Don't be distracted 
so that day would come upon you unawares so that you're not prepared. There's a lot of people out there not prepared, not even looking, not even concerned. You know, America here is hyper-concerned about whether we should throw out the police, cancel culture, limiting our freedom to speech. In fact, it's gone so far, President Trump is out of Twitter. He can't, he, he censored a president of the United States, now ex-president, censored from social media. It's gotten really quiet from President Trump, hasn't it? Social media. All right. And in fact, a pastor is kicked off. You'll find more of this coming. So it's like if you're in China as a Christian, you have zero voice. And it's moving that way in America, silencing you. But in verse 30, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know that your own selves, that summer is nigh at hand. You know, you look at Jerusalem, it's the burdensome stone. Uh, worldwide organizations come, unite against Jerusalem. Uh, burdensome stone. How is Israel burdened? How is Jerusalem a burden? It's a burden to the UN. Uh, you know, and all their votes, their votes are against Israel. <laughs> but um, they can't get rid of Israel. Neither can the Muslims. In fact, little Israel is just one, one thousandth, one, one thousandth. I can't even say it right of the earth's population. That's how small. But you see, it's the center of attention in the last days, as God said it would be. So the prophecy is true. They're all coming to Israel to cut Israel to pieces. It seemed like George Bush should have known more about this, reading his Bible. They say read the Bible every morning, that kind of thing. I don't hear anything about him reading the Bible anymore. I don't know what he's doing. But uh, how do you miss these verses like this? Verse 31 so likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Now we're moving towards Ezekiel 38 war, but um, <clears throat> Israel will win, but Israel does not win by Israel's power. There's earthquakes and that kind of thing when things fall apart. It's the power of God protecting his people. So what nations are coming against Israel in Ezekiel chapter 38? All this hate against Israel. One is Gog. Some feel that's a person instead of a nation there being addressed. Persia, Iran, they're in Syria now too. Uh, Ethiopia, mostly Sudan. Libya, Gomar, they discuss whether that's Turkey or Germany. Uh, the north country, the far north country, Russia, the old Soviet Union, in fact, was half Muslim. And um, so you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, what's going to happen God says, I will make it happen. I'll put a hook in their jaw. They will come after Israel, and then God will take them out. So it's, you know, provoking them to war. And, but what's interesting here in Ezekiel 38, all of those countries listed are in Syria now. And they got some kind of, they don't like each other, but they're kind of allies. They are to oppose Israel. So coming to take a spoil, what would be the spoil to Iran, they want Jerusalem. To Russia, they want the natural resources. They are desperate for that. And by God's design, guess what happened? They have discovered, why here? Why little Israel? But by God's design, 30 trillion metric yards of natural gas right off the coast of Israel. All of that down there, why Israel? Why this spot? Well, it's a hook in the jaw. Israel's there. Israel's got this, but Russia's coming after it. And so all of this to destroy Israel, but God will destroy Islam. Definitely, in the Gog and Magog war, Islam's going to end up nothing. Embarrassed, whoever's left. And they'll be, you know, just ready for the false prophet and the Antichrist of the Great Tribulation. 
Why would they want Islam after that? 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, how often we think of that? They say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. <coughs> uh, when our son Michael was born, it took a long time. It was a long birth. We had a poor, poor doctor. There shouldn't be a doctor. And so it was a painful time for Irene. It just lasted. But then suddenly it was here. <laughs> you know, that's the way these things are coming to pass. Really, as you look at this, it takes more faith not to believe the Bible, and all these things are so obvious here in these prophecies, from 25 to 2,800 years ago. Now, you look at Syria. That's where Iran is storing their rockets. Why, with the goal, why, why put them in Syria? With the goal of blowing Israel away. It's demonic. And Iran claims they want to destroy Israel. They claim that. We don't believe them here. Israel takes them at their word. Those fanatics over there, when they say they want to destroy Israel, Israel believes they're coming to get us. They want to drive us in the sea. They want to destroy us just like they say it's a mission to destroy. So we've got to arm up. In verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, and that ye shall come to pass that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And so Jesus is really saying, if you want to be counted worthy, and I think this is for any age, what do you need to do? Well, whatever your generation Watch and pray. Watch and pray. People in the future, people now. If we don't, friend, that's just irresponsible. If we don't care, we don't study prophecy, we don't even look at this, we don't even want to hear it, that's irresponsible. That's not responding to God the way God said. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 22, is about the Laodicean church. Jesus said, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. Because of that, I'll spew you out of, your, out of my mouth. You see you're rich, you're really wretched. Really wretched. And you're blind. How much blindness today? So, Revelation says here, I counsel thee. You know, you want white raiment? You want to be accepted by God? The Bible says here, I love whom I rebuke. You need to repent. It's like America today, the American churches today. It's uh, pitiful. I'm so disappointed in who we are as America today. America needs to repent. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So the Lord says, because you want to be neutral, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You need to be hot for God. So that's just a rejected false church. It's all over the place. Rejected. It's false. How we need to follow the Bible. How we need to watch and pray. How we need to watch the news, compare it to the Bible, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Witness to the lost. As I go through profiles on Facebook, you know, I'm on a debate page. Some of them have profiles that look like, you know, demons, and they and they, they write, and they type, and they argue as if the demons took over their keyboard. It's like keyboard warriors of Satan himself. They're so miserable. But they don't want to be called miserable. They don't, sometimes Christians bring that up, you're just such miserable people. They get really mad about that. They, get, they go from mad to more mad. They're mad people, mad people. But then you look at the profiles of Christians that come across, or you meet them in the... You know, I'm giving out tracts, and I meet somebody, I give a tract. I'm a Christian. I go, I knew that already. <laughs> you just tell, they're so full of the love of the Lord. 
so full of joy. That's what Jesus does. Changes our lives. Keep witnessing. Keep telling others, those miserable people out there, they need to come to Christ. Showing, you know, people overseas how to win souls to Christ. I was witnessing about that, and they turned right around, and the teacher said, I sent them out into the villages with that information. <clears throat> but um, I reminded them, too, you know, all the virus fears, and the poverty there, and the starving people and everything, they just need somebody who loves them. They need hope. So I remind them that there's hope in the Word of God. Show them Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we do have Jesus. We have hope. We have eternal life. We pray, Lord, for anybody watching online. We're, we welcome them. We're glad they're here. And we love them, too. And you love them. And we ask, Lord, that you will help them, that each one of them will have the same hope and joy that we have in Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for them, give them eternal life, risen from the dead, now in power in heaven, as we call out to him, he hears our prayers, to tell him exactly what we want. We want to be saved. We want to become a child of God. We believe in him. He answers our prayers. We pray many will say that prayer. Call for Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your hymnals to 517, please. 517, I'd rather have Jesus than anything in this world. Anything the world could throw at me or give to me, I'd rather have Jesus. Let's stand and sing together on the first stanza. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. He's fairer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out of the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. And we thank you, Lord, that you do protect us. You do take care of us. You do, do love your nation, Israel, your people. 
And yet you've expanded that to all people who would come to you, all who would look to you, to look to the blood shed on the cross, the Son of God crucified. And Lord, we just thank you that we're counted worthy. And Lord, as the world around us chooses to go against your people, seen as Israel, I pray, Lord, that you protect them. I pray that you guide and direct them, give them wisdom, give them peace in Israel. And I pray that even here with your people, that as we take a stand for your word and uh, have this opportunity online through the, the uh, media uh, or uh, in person, I pray that you'll take care of us. I pray that you'll touch hearts, soften hearts for the gospel. Save souls today. We ask it in Christ's precious name. Amen.